What is a mid-bass coupler? Alvaro in Santiago, Chile would like to know. Hello, Paul. I recently... Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Eh, I should read these first. I really love your videos. Why, thank you, Alvaro. Um, thank you very much for sharing so generously. It's, it's my pleasure. It's how I spend my Saturday down here with you. My question is, what are the characteristics and functions of the mid-bass coupler that appears on every PS Audio AN speaker? Thank you much. Okay. That's a simple one. It's, it's that one. Now, we are redesigning the AN3, so in a future video, as we move on, you'll start to see the new ones, and I'm really excited. We, uh, we did, Darren and I designed these AN3s. I am so proud of these. I mean, they're gorgeous speakers. They sound great. They've got a, a wonderful 10-inch ribbon uh, uh, mid-range. They've got a uh, ribbon tweeter front and back the mid-bass coupler, which I will explain, and a built-in subwoofer on the bottom. And they're really great, but they, they still can take a step up. And I am never satisfied, <laughs> rarely satisfied. So I met over the internet this guy, Chris Brunhaber pings me and says, hey, you need some help on the speaker? I know a lot about speakers. I helped, uh, I, you know, uh, worked with the guy that designed the Bolander Gravener. I worked at Bolander Gravener for a number of years. I know driver design. So if you need any help, I'm here. And I thought, well, I'm not going to turn that down. I mean, you know, after Arnie passed away, I don't have a real speaker genius to work with. And Chris came along. I flew him out here after we talked for a while. He's a very impressive guy. Anyway, I, after a weekend with Chris, my head was swimming. And I just thought, oh my God. And I, I got to hire you. Whatever you're doing, quit your job, come work for us, take over the speaker department. And, and I twisted his arm and Chris did. And uh, wow. He has redesigned everything. The tweeters, the mid-range, the, the mid-bass couplers, the, the, the woofer. Oh my God, where do you see what this woofer does? This woofer, we have 700 watts driving it, okay? That's about 40, 44 volts or something of, of high power energy. And the amplifier in here is capable of clipping this, this speaker, but by that time it's putting out a lot of, a lot of juice. But, and, and it's a great driver, a big, huge cast basket, you know, but Chris said, eh, I'm going to start from scratch, design a brand new 12 for you guys that your amplifier will not be able to clip even at its, at its loudest point. That'll be completely linear. That'll have throw, I mean, I was like, Ah, my jaw dropped and I'm drooling going, oh my God, this is amazing. So he redesigned everything to match. So, you know, most companies, I don't care whether it's, it's let's not name any names. Most speaker companies, from the biggest to the smallest, use some variation of an off-the-shelf driver. Some of them certainly design their own, but most speaker companies you're familiar with go to a Siaz or go to Dyne Audio or, a, or any number of driver manufacturers or offshore people, and they buy drivers. Sometimes they change them to their spec, like, like we did. It's very different to have somebody with the skill level that we now have here that can, from the ground up, design drivers that are specific to a design. That's, that's it's like, if we were designing a piece of electronics and you know we hunt through catalogs to find transistors that will match what we're trying to do wouldn't it be amazing if i had somebody on staff that could design transistors for me that could you know or or specific capacitors oh well anyway now we can with speakers enough babbling this is a mid-bass coupler a mid-bass coupler is part of a four-way, at least a four-way speaker system. So this is a four-way speaker system. So you've got a tweeter, a mid-range, 
a mid-bass coupler, and a woofer. This speaker will go from about 30,000 hertz down to about 16 hertz. It's truly full range, and you know if you watch my series how I feel about speakers that aren't full range. Damn it, they gotta be full range. And this one is, but it's a four-way. Now, we could, if we didn't have the mid-bass coupler, then this mid-range would have to go down low enough in frequency to match the subwoofer down here. We didn't want to take the subwoofer down here that high because this can only go down as low as it can go. It's a ribbon. So that meant we'd have to take this woofer up higher to match the bottom of the mid-range. And we didn't want to do that for a couple of reasons. One, those frequencies are really critical to the human ear. I mean, really critical. Two, 300 hertz, 150, 200 hertz, somewhere around there. Very critical. And it has to be done right from the proper um, uh, dispersion, the, the proper on-axis, off-axis. And because our driver, because we want a skinny cabinet, is in the side, that says I can't take it too high in frequency. Therefore, we need something to bridge the gap between the mid-range and the top of the woofer. That is the mid-bass coupler. Now in our design, unless we decide to change it, but right now you're able to turn the volume up and down on that mid-bass coupler to suit your needs. So you get more chest or less, or you can make it thick or thin. Uh, it's pretty cool, but that is a mid-bass coupler. All right, thanks for the question. Sorry about all the rambling and I'll talk to you tomorrow.